Yo, what is going on, YouTube? I hope you guys are doing wonderful today. Today, we bring you guys the top five supports going into qualifiers, into worlds, just to round out this year, because there's going to be no other big patches. These are the gods that I expect to see at worlds, at qualifiers, stuff like that. And these are the gods that I expect to see band picked, early picked the most. So yeah, we'll start with number five, the beetle. Kepri has seen uh, a little bit of a resurgence. You kind of see him like pop in and then pop out and then pop in and then pop out. And he's just a god that if you forget what he does, you forget how to play against him. He will dominate the team because he has good pick potential. He has good safety. He has good team fight. His save potential is everything about this character is good. But he, he does have clear weaknesses that are hard to exploit if you haven't played against him in a while. No CC immune alt. Very punishing. Mediocre laning phase, not great. Late game, if you don't have beads, you can kind of just kill him and make his ult uh, irrelevant because he just drops it on himself and then you can just go on to other people. So Kepri has clear weaknesses, clear strengths, but right now he is seeing that resurgence and he's seeing a lot of play and I expect to see him a lot. The build right now is benevolence. I think Kepri and I think a lot of these gods are heavy benevolence users because compassion if you compare com compassion in the late game to the embrace if you compare these two items uh the stats they're not anything different that much the ap five eight gold per five you get a compassion is actually insane and if you guys don't take that into consideration when you buy it or when you see the enemy buy it you'll see you'll fall behind in gold and you're like why am i falling behind and it's just because they get gold for doing nothing just for buying the item it's the same thing as benevolence i actually don't know why it's still on the item when they removed the benevolence gold for five they should have just removed the compassion gold for five uh compassion is sick in that aspect and then the passive of compassion damage taken by allied gods within 70 percent or 70 units of you is reduced by 15 percent up to a maximum of 100 damage so basically damage that your squishies take redirects to you and you eat that damage instead of them so if you have 2000 health on your hunter we'll say he has to take an extra 300 damage to die that is pretty insane along with other peel aspects you have life steal he has that makes those hunters that much harder to kill uh, especially because they're hardly ever taking enough damage to die anyway. Sentinel's Embrace is just protections. Split them on all allied gods within 55 units of yourself. This is good, but it gets a lot worse the more teammates that are around you. So if you have you, your jungler, your mid, your ADC all around you, you're going to be giving out 20 prots of each. Not that great late game. Early game would be insane. Early game, an absolutely unreal item. The problem is, is this falls off a lot late game because protections are not as valuable as percent mitigation, which you're giving to your allies. So in that regards, Sentinels embrace is good late game, not great. Compassion is great late game, but the early game is not great. Uh, Benevolence as an item still is worse than Sentinels in the landing phase, but Benevolence does kick on to le like level eight, nine. That's when Compassion, I mean, that's when... Uh, Sentinels and Benevolence are kind of uh, at an even playing field because you're not getting as much use out of the protections from Sentinels. And uh, you can actually get a lot of gold from Benevolence if you're using it properly. So the Kepri build. Started with Benevolence, Tier 1 Thebes. Up to you how many pots you want. You can get either three or four. I usually do three because I just like the extra 50 gold. But if you feel like you take a lot of damage, go for it. It's not that big of a deal. 1,500 gold right here. Right here. Hog the camp so that your teammate, your ADC, doesn't get the side minions. Let him split the big purple minion, but do not let him split the sides because you will not hit level two off the first wave, which is a problem. Then you're going to immediately go into Thebes. I've been liking Prudent a lot. I've been liking Shogun's a lot. Sav is always clean. Heartward and Bulwark. I think these are the... And uh, Relic Dagger. These are the biggest items that you'll go after the Thebes. So you're always going Thebes first after the Benevolence. So Thebes, Benevolence. And then if you go Pridwin. It opens up and you can go almost any other item. You can go Relic Dagger, Heartward, Bulwark. Just make sure you're getting an even amount of prots if you're playing against a, a good physical and magical damaging team. And then end it with a Spirit's Robe or a Mantle. And then feel free to go a power item somewhere in the build. I think it's a lot worse on characters that are building Benevolence because you take extra damage with the Compassion. And if you don't have five actual true defense items, you're going to feel like you're really squishy. So I'd be very careful going Compassion with a power item. But you always can. If you're stomping the game, feel free to do it. But this is what the Kepri build would look like. Uh, a full Kepri build to me in a game where I'm just... If I, if I'm playing against a normal team, something that... It's not that all that surprising. I'd go something like Thebes and Dasav into, we'll say, Shoguns into Spirit's Rope, Proton, and that's the build. And then I'd go into the Compassion Light game. So that's the Kepri build. Number five, Kepri, the Dawnbringer. We'll save that. Why not? 
Number four, you'll see a little bit of consistency here because the top four gods have kind of stayed the same throughout most of the year. Sylvanas. Sylvanas isn't as strong as he is as he was because Lotus Crown got nerfed. I think he used to be three-ish, maybe two-ish, and now he's dropped a bit because Lotus isn't as good. And I think Sylvanas is kind of a Sentinel's God because you need that early tankiness for the laning phase. And it scales really well into the late game to allow you to go a power item. And I think Sylvanas does really well with power items. So I'd go that into Lotus. I think Lotus is still a buy on Sylvanas. So I'd go Lotus into Thebes. Most games, like this is 90% of games. I'd do this build. Make sure we get that Sentinels in there. And then I'd go something like a Bulwark, Artward, or Shoguns. One of these items next, if you have good objective damage, and you focus around objectives, go Shoguns. If they have a lot of magical dive and they're Guardians, go Artward. If they're focused on killing you, go Bulwark. We'll go Bulwark because a lot of people like killing the tree. And then you can go something like a Divine, which I've been loving in support. You can go an Ethereal Staff, which is great. You can go Magus, you can go Rod. I think those are like the four best support items or support power items. And then I'd end with a Mantle, Peridwin, or Spirit's Robe. One of these items. So say we wanted the Divine because they have a lot of defense or a lot of healing. We'll go something like that. And then either of the Sentinels upgrades are very good. If you're not full build, Sentinel's Boon allows you to get full build very, very, very fast. And the heal is insane on Sieges. And then Sentinel's Embrace, just a good all-around item, but it's not as good when you have a lot of teammates around you. Number three, Yamoja. This nerf to her two, where shields don't stack, made her way more manageable in the late game. Because it used to be if you got late game with Yamoja and you had Compassion, she's a Benevolence God, and you got the Compassion, it felt like you could never kill anyone because you had to fight through 15% extra damage or 50%, you had to do 50% extra damage. You had to get through Yamoja shield, through Yamoja healing, through Yamoja protections on her three and the movement speed on her three, through her wall blocking you, through her CC, her damage. Like it was incredible the amount you had to get through. I think Yamoja kind of has this like really good early game. And then the mid game, she kind of dies down a lot. And then the late game, she kind of pops up again. And then she stays good because her laning phase is great. Her late game peel is great, but her mid game feels very weak, very mediocre sometimes. And she has a lot of counters, not a lot, but a couple counters that make her feel very poor. I think she is finally a Thebes God. I think Lotus is a lot worse on her. And then I think you need Pridden on her second. Her cooldowns are horrible. Well, her alt cooldown is horrible and you need this cooldown early. And it also gives you extra survivability, which Emoji does not have a lot of. So almost every game, Benevolence, Thebes, Pridwin, and then the same thing, Shoguns, if you need a little bit of extra objective damage and you want to focus on objectives, Bulwark for survivability. Uh, if they have a lot of physical damage, you can go Sov. A lot of magical damage, you can go Heart Word. Relic Dagger, if you want to focus on your relics, stuff like that. And then just make sure you have a Spirit's Robe or a Mantle in the late game. So let's say you want Bulwark. They don't have that much physical damage, so you can go into a Spirit's Robe, and then you want a power item because the Emoji is a pretty good power user. You want a Deso. I'm not a big fan of Deso on support anymore, but I think Emoji uses it really well because it reduces her Omi. It gives you like more Omi, so you can spam abilities more, and I like that. I also think she uses Magus well to allow you to lock down people and kill off of it. She procs Divine okay, and then she's a healer, so Rod always feels good because she makes her do extra damage and extra healing. So that is the build on Yamoja, and then you go into the Compassion Lake game. No animosity abusing on these characters. He just jumped on my lap. He literally, I would let him stay up here if he didn't attack my cord, but he attacks the cord. I, I'm not kicking him off because I'm mean, I'm kicking him off because he attacks my cord. All right, number two, Geb. The buff to Geb's ult made him so he has relevant early game damage and relevant early game combo potential to make him scale into the late game. He also just can roll through at level one, get clear early, and then knock somebody back to get pressure with his ADC. So his level one is actually good. His level two is meh, and then his level three is good again. So that's kind of why Geb has is, is gotten that little bit of resurgence. Uh, Geb also a Benevolence user, also a Thebes user. And then surprise, surprise, he is a Pridwin user. And he is kind of the exact same way as Yamoja, except not a healer so no lotus crown no uh i guess rod's still fine because he does a lot of damage but it, it's basically the same thing full work you got heart word you've got sov shoguns you can go relic dagger if you're reliant on cooldowns 
but these two items should or th these three items should be your start 90 percent of the time sometimes you fall behind you can't really get the Purdue and you need to go into um heartward or bulwark or maybe you need the relic dagger to blink a little bit more anything like this say you want say they have a lot of guardians they have two guardians one in solo one in support you want the heart word and then your team is falling behind a bit and you want to give them extra protections with the sov and uh you just need a little bit of tankiness late game you go into the mantle and that's going to be your build kind of and then you can go into the compassion so just don't forget you go either a spirit or mantle nearly every game i say every game just because it's easier to remember you go one of these every game because they give you such good raw stats to live or sorry not raw stats the passives allow you to live really really long and then the number one support that i think right now in smite terra you are now able to play her again they changed that you cannot use that two terra mechanic that is out of the game it's no longer a thing but this character is still unreal great laning phase past level three great mid game and then very 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 good late game her only weakness is level one and level two with the mechanic her level one was only her only bad level so now Terra has a bad level or a mediocre level one a bad level two and then level three and onward unreal god i love Terra as a sentinel's god because i think she builds power better than probably any other guardian not a, not a lotus character anymore i think i like thieves on her a lot more but i'd do something like this like i said if you're building into sentinels it feels a lot better to build power items so i'd go something like this and then into a divine and then you could even go double power on her and it feels so good and then you just get a blink and you can go something like this do the upgraded let's just do a uh, embrace so you do something like this and you're sitting at you get an extra 60 props from this so you're sitting at like 260 220 2900 health 250 power and you are actually one-shotting with your kit and you are impossible to deal with and then you've also got Purdue and shield for cooldowns mantle cooldown this character you can kind of just build anything as long as you're building a little bit of protections for the enemy team if they have a lot of physicals maybe slap on a sob instead of one of these items if they have a lot of magical maybe a bulwark but for the most part this character you can go double power items with a blink and you can just one shot the back line or you can play her more as a peel character you go like the med and then you build into like bulwark here into sob and then you're super tanky eat a lot of damage and then you can go benevolence because this character can go benevolence also into the compassion so there's multiple ways to play her i like playing her a little bit more damage but i recognize that both builds are very very good for her and that is it that is the top five supports in the game right now hope you guys enjoyed the video i hope you guys learned a lot if you guys have any questions ask away in the comments and uh yeah if they, if you think i miss somebody like maybe you think bacchus is insane right now and i'm an idiot for not including bacchus let me know hope you guys enjoyed the video and i hope you guys have a wonderful wonderful Rest of your day and hope you guys enjoy the weekend. See you, see ya.